Good morning. On behalf of the Seattle Betsuin Buddhist Temple, thank you for joining today's service. As this is the fifth Sunday of the month, the Betsuin will not gather for Dharma Exchange today. Next week, February 7th, the service will be hosted by the Temple's Boy Scout and Cub Scout troops. Please tune in for their service next week and enjoy today's. Namo Amidabits, Namo Amidabits, Namo Amidabits, Namo Amidabits, Namo Amidabits, Namo Amidabits, Namo Oh, okay. 
Our Pledge. Breaking out of my shell, I will share a warm smile and speak gentle words, just like the kind Buddha. Not becoming lost in my greed, anger, and ignorance, I shall think and act with an open mind, just like the calm and peaceful Buddha. Not putting myself first, I will share in the joy and sadness of others, just like the compassionate Buddha. Realizing the gift of life I have received, I shall strive to live each day to its fullest, like the Buddha who tirelessly works to liberate all. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namanda, Namanda. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to begin with words from Shinran Shoni from the Jogai Wasan. In hearing the compassionate vow of the transcendent world, although I am a foolish being of this world of samsara, whose defiled body is filled with human passions, my heart is playing in the pure land. Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts, Namanda, Namanda, Namanda. What exactly do these words of Shinran Shonin mean? At first glance, they can sound a little negative or rather self-deprecating. He calls himself a foolish being of this world of samsara or having a defiled body filled with human passions. At first glance, my heart is playing in the pure land sounds dismissive as though there's an apathetic nature to being a foolish being due to the fact that we're all safe through the compassionate vow anyway. However, this is not so. On the contrary, the words from this Jogai Wasan are quite salvific in that even through all of our poisons and ego self of human nature, through the compassionate vow, we are all still welcomed in the beer land. 
to know this is such a relief, to have the recognition that in spite of our shortcomings as Bombu foolish beings, we are still able to be embraced by the workings of Amida Buddha. It took a great deal of introspective study and mindfulness for me to come to this realization. With this recognition, how can one's heart not play in the Pure Land? In Hideo Yonezawa's book, Awaken to Your True Self, The Shin Buddhist Way of Life, it states that the Pure Land is an expression of the world of gratitude. To feel appreciation, gratitude, and shamefulness is to become a person who now hears the depths of the Dharma. Our real self is expressed through gratitude. When that occurs, our ego self is hidden behind a shadow. It is dormant. We can be permitted to forget because we are such that we will remember again. This is a wonderful way to explain those words of Shinran Shonin. We cannot change the fact that we are human, and as such, we will always have our ego selves. But at least we can strive to be mindful of where we are and grateful for what we have. In this way, we can carry through. It makes me think of night turning over into day and being caught in the quiet but fleeting moment of the twilight. To me, that is where Shinjin lies when our ego self turns over to our true self. That isn't to say Shinjin is expected or experienced every time, but at least we have those moments when it is there. They are quiet moments because they are moments of self-reflection and surrender, yet they are also great moments of reassurance, absolute gratitude, and joy. This can be well explained with the recent words from the 2021 New Year's greeting of Gomonshu Kojun Otani. Even though, having been introduced to the truth by Buddha Shakyamuni, ordinary people like us are still not able to accept it as it is. Therefore, to guide us to cope with the suffering caused by our own ignorance, Shinran Shonin clarifies Amida Buddha's compassion that always embraces us all. When the world is facing this unimaginable crisis, it is crucial that each of us experiences Amida Buddha's great compassion ourselves and live each day to the utmost, having that joy and sensation in our hearts as the basis of our life. The ways to achieve this are immeasurable, but we have certain traditions that help us to exercise that practice to keep us close. For example, some Buddhists have morning and evening services in front of their altars or butsudans at home. At this time, we can strive to face the absolute self, the Buddha nature, the Buddha mind, or the spirituality within ourselves. I try to do this, but for myself, it is difficult to separate my secular mind and what is going on around me from what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to teach my four-year-old daughter how to do gasho, how to say the nembutsu, and how to put on her motoshiksho and onenju all by herself. I even have her light the incense with me. I try to make her a part of it with me as much as I can, even if she cannot yet comprehend or understand it fully. All the while, I'm trying to be cognizant of focusing on the light of the candle myself, or of focusing on Amida Buddha in the altar. To focus on anything more than her, much less to feel anything more than a surface grasp of what is going on is difficult. And in the entire process, I end up oftentimes feeling ashamed as if I have failed at my attempts and just merely gone through motions. I have felt frustrated and at times, this has even caused me to be short-tempered, which makes me feel more shame. I often felt like I was trying and failing, trying and failing, and felt defeated at teaching my daughter the Nembutsu at all, or grasping what I was supposed to myself. But in the past couple of months, my perspective may have changed some. 
At times, my daughter could hear the conch shell bell in the background and would come to me announcing that it was time for service. She now lights the incense with me every time with ease. And when she puts the flame out, she does so with the flourish <laughs> and a relish because she knows that she's doing it the correct way. When she puts on her monto chic show, she wants to make sure that I am watching so I can see her bow to it in gratitude before putting it on. When I watch her put her little hands together in gasho next to mine, it brings me joy. I hope that this practice will someday give her the comfort that it gives me. She even started saying namo emidabutsu with the same inflection and tone that I use. Throughout the day, as we continue with our schoolwork studies and activities, the scent of the incense fills the main area where we are and keeps my mind tethered to our existence in that moment and each moment that we share throughout the day. It heightens my awareness of the Dharma I experience through these current circumstances of quarantine and of all the wonderful things I'm experiencing in my life in spite of it or even because of it. Where I had short-tempered and frustrated moments, I now have more moments where I am patient with appreciation and understanding. I cannot do everything. That jikiri or self-power does nothing but undermine me. I need more moments of just being, to just surrender and live in that moment. I may not be successful at that all the time, but life has been so much sweeter since I figured that out. Thanks to the study of Shinjin and the teachings of Shinran Shonin, now, when I feel shame at recognition of my ego self, rather than feel that I'm a bad person, I feel as though I'm healing. I sense where the Dharma is the medicine that helps me see my poisons, and the Buddha Dharma also works as a guidance to help me cure those poisons. I can recognize myself as a bamboo and therein have forgiveness for myself and my human nature. I know that if I feel this shame, then I feel it with my true self. I know that my journey isn't blind. And even if I may stumble in my world of samsara or fall prey to my passions, the other shore is still ahead. Thanks to the compassionate vow, even a foolish being such as myself is saved. Therefore, in those fortunate moments of shinjin and those mindful moments of gratitude, my heart is playing in the pure, pure land. In hearing the compassionate vow of the transcendent world, although I am a foolish being of this world of samsara, whose defiled body is filled with human passions, my heart is playing in the pure land. Namo Amida Buddha, Namo Amida Buddha, Namo Amida Buddha, Namanda, Namanda, Namanda. Please join me in the reading of the Golden Chain, number two. Together, please. I am a link in the Buddha's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I must keep my link bright and strong. I will try to be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I will try to think pure and beautiful thoughts to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds, knowing on that what I do now depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but also that of others. May every link in the Buddha's golden chain of love become bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Mirabutsu, Namo Mirabutsu, Namo Mirabutsu, Namandats, Namandats, Namandats. Please join me in Gasho. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namanda, but Namanda, but Namanda, but Namanda, Namanda. 
Good morning, and uh, welcome to the last Sunday service of January 2021. Um, I wanted to talk about time, I guess. Uh, I, I've been thinking a lot about what's been happening over the, the, over the last year and, and our relationship to what this time feels like. Um, it's been almost a year since the last time we have been able to get together in our own temple and to and to have a service. And you know, during that time, it it kind of feels like, on the one hand, we're in this suspended animation, and at the other, that things are going so so quickly, and that we're that that we're tired and spent, and uh, that it 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 is really worth thinking about what really is going on what's going on with ourselves and with our families and with the people around us um, and and what can buddhism teach us about this particular moment um, if you come to our new year's services every year um, there's one thing that i say every time i i talk on january 1st uh, and that is you made it uh, that's a kind of remarkable thing and I uh, and I uh, it, it almost sounds like I'm playing that off for a joke every year as I'm doing that but the fact that we are able to make it through and see another year is remarkable uh, and even today as we see friends and and, and family uh, who didn't make it um, and and our neighbors and the, and the people around us and you know the people in the country and around the world um, who have died over the last year um, from something that we didn't even know existed a little over a year ago um, gives us a sense of some some complicated feelings about uh, about life and death there is it, it kind of felt like we were invincible right when we heard stories about something like this happening there was never the idea that it could happen again we had this great medicine and uh, these, these these hospitals that were available to us and yet all that it took was for one virus to travel the world and before we even knew it it was it was upon us uh, i remember the first uh, time that i had heard that it had come to the united states to to washington state i remember exactly where i was and i remember thinking well it'll resolve itself and uh, and here we are. Uh, we are still uh, sort of locked in this in this time. And I wanted to think about this just because I feel sometimes like every day gets longer. <laughs> Though we the things that I've that, that I that I came to take for granted aren't aren't coming back. And I think that this is, this is a great time for us to reconnect with what B Buddhism teaches us, especially about, about the self and about the ego. Uh, and, and the way that I, that, that I want to kind of describe this is just using the, the idea of time for us to, to really think about how this is, has come about. I feel like as I'm getting older, and I think some of you might actually understand this uh, as you get older as well, that... I feel that long ago things are a lot closer than they than they were, and that my idea of what it was like when I was a lot younger is different. Uh, and I think about this. There's this one musical story that I that I have that that sort of helps me realize what uh, what what time is. Um, when I was in junior high, I remember there was this one album that I listened to, and it was classic rock, and it might as well, as well have been to me like from the Stone Age. But I looked it up, and this album that I was listening to every day was 13 years old. And that just that idea that I thought that this was something that was just so that was so ancient that happened so long ago, uh, but it was actually just that close is. It just kind of uh, it's kind of astounding to me I, I went back and I looked at what were popular albums in uh, you know 13 years ago and it was 
uh, like Kanye West's first two albums came out around that time. Beyonce had her second solo album come out around that time. And, and to treat that like, like that was just impossibly long ago to have, uh, you know, to, to, to be thinking about music gives me the sense that I, I forget, I forget that this, that time is this constant evolving, changing thing. Um, and that we evolve with it. And, and to think about what life was like 20 years ago, uh, l even living in Seattle, the, if, you, if you think about kind of downtown Seattle, what it looked like going into, uh, like, uh, taking the exit off of Mercer and going down and seeing like the, the, the tow truck, which if, you, if you're not from Seattle or you're not familiar with the, with the area, there was a, a Lincoln towing truck that was in the shape of a tow. And that was just sitting there in the middle of the of this empty field, which is now, uh, I think, where the highway empties out into and is surrounded on all sides by all of these brand new buildings. So these things change so quickly over our lives, and we we don't understand how that we change with them. And whenever I think about that, I think about how if if that's only 20 years ago, that a hundred years ago doesn't really seem that far. Um, to, to us, a hundred years ago, is we still have people that are, that are in the temple, that are in the, the, that are in the BCA tradition, who have lived that long. And it just, it, it's, it feels like it's so long ago, but it's so close to us. And Whenever I, whenever I have one of these moments where I think about how, how long ago things were, I usually pull out this book. Um, this is the, the uh, first century of the Seattle Buddhist Church. So uh, this is Mukashi Mukashi. And every time I, I, I look through this book, I see something in, in the history to, to reconnect to. And in this story, we have the the story of something that happened about a hundred years ago, which was the 1918 flu epidemic. Um, this was about on the same scale as what we're experiencing right now with the coronavirus. There were uh, waves of uh, like of uh, infections that that were coming through. People thought that they were that that things were going to be okay, and then there were second waves that, that that came through. We had places that were requiring masks, and people that were saying, "Oh no, masks are not like I don't want to I don't want to wear a mask." And it, all of the same things that we that, that we see today of just that that feeling of oh I'm I'm separate from this. This isn't really for me. Were things that happened just the same way a hundred years ago. But there's one specific story about this that I think really puts everything together in, in a Buddhist context. And I hadn't known this before I read this book, but the, the Sangha of, of what became Seattle Betsuin built a, a hospital, a medical center uh, in the early 1900s, around 1912, 1913. And that was the, the healthcare center for the, the Japanese and Japanese American population in the Seattle area. So one of, uh, one of our former head ministers, uh, his name was Reverend Hoshin Fuji, was the president of this, uh, of this medical center. And in the period around 1918, he was collecting funds, uh, about $35,000, which is a little more than a half a million dollars in today's dollars. To build a new uh, to build a new hospital called Reliance Hospital, and as they were getting close to this, to being able to build a, a, a hospital for the community, the flu outbreak occurred. And so, in October and into November, um, people started getting sick in the Seattle area. And as that as it reached an epidemic status, and the the hospital beds throughout Seattle. Were, were full and thousands more people were streaming in. This healthcare center that was, that was built in the Japanese community opened its doors for people that were sick with the, with the influenza. 
and uh, including putting cots in the hallways so that people would have a place um, to, to be looked after. And in the end, um, hundreds, uh, hundreds of people, thousands of people in, in Washington state died of, the, uh, of this, including, uh, including about 100 uh, Japanese and Japanese Americans in this, in this hospital. And in the aftermath of that, people weren't unable to pay the, the hospital bills for, for this. And so that $35,000 that had been saved went to pay the bills of the doctors and nurses that uh, were taking care of these patients. And that hospital never materialized. And I think about this and, and what kinds of lessons we would, we would have drawn and what would have happened in, you know, today. Um, I don't think that if we saved up half a million dollars, we can build a hospital in 2021. But I think about the lessons that we are taught in, in our tradition about interconnectedness and, and impermanence. And that we must give of ourselves, that we have to recognize that it isn't all me, me, me. And I think that if we had been in the same position, we wouldn't have had to do the same thing. That we would have had to 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 give up, to to give of the like of of the community, in order to save the the, the people around us. Um, and, and and to be fair, these were not uh, these were not racially integrated. Let's all get along. Times the Japanese community at the at the time in in Seattle before and after obviously dealt with e enormous racism in in this time and still they put themselves out in order to save lives and and that was a hundred years ago and as i think about this I, I i think we will have this opportunity again this is we are we are in the in the the depths of this we have we have yet to come out of of this and we and we have this vaccine that's that's coming and it's 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 slow but we but we, we will we will have people to you know to to administer this and and whether we're doctors and i know that there are people that are um, that, that are in the sangha that are that, that are healthcare professionals that are volunteering their time or they're working in these in these clinics to get the vaccine out or they're working with with patients and that's amazing work. And I feel like there is going to be so much more opportunity as this comes along for us to, to think about our relationship to, to the community around us, not just to our own family and to our own Sangha members, but as Buddhists, what is our responsibility to, to help, um, to, make this, uh, to make this a better place? And... I think that we will have those opportunities. I don't think that we're all going to we're all going to learn how to uh, give injections, um, but I know that there are people that are standing there, uh, guiding people in to to all of these clinics. That there are going to be spaces that need to to be opened up because there are 350 million of us that are going to need to have this taken care of, and and I think about the the idea of the of the ego of just. Every time I go outside, I think, why? <laughs> Who am I exposing potentially to this? How am I being exposed by, by other people? And just all of those unnecessary trips, all of those things where, where I, I was, you know, I, I tried to, you know, like I, I, I just wanted something so badly that I, that I had to go out and that I, that I didn't wear the mask properly. And that it's, you know, that all of those things are, are manifestations of the ego that I'm putting myself above someone else. And that the, the risk, the fact that we know what happens when, when that occurs and, and that we know that people are uh, uh, that that the uh, the virus is is evolving, uh, and that we have new strains that that are even more uh, spreadable. That that we might 
just have an, a, another outbreak just because we weren't protecting ourselves even better. And, and as I was thinking about this and I, and I, you know, re remembering this and, and wanting so, so much to sort of stay safe and not, or, you know, and, and not expose myself, uh, you know, to, 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 to other people's spaces un unnecessarily. Um, it occurred to me that, uh, I have a beard <laughs> and the you know, and and there's and there's guidance now that says that we that we should be covering our our faces with 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 uh you know two masks that we that the we we need to be able to seal our uh, our faces and i know that this beard and and i especially know this because i went to get ordained and i had to shave the beard because this isn't usually how buddhist ministers look <laughs> this is my ego this is the thing that the that, that that's me uh, i i when i think of my 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 image in the in the mirror there's the, there's this beard and i know that if i were in a situation where if the virus were to sneak into the mask and I breathe it in and that I were to be carrying COVID and that I were to give it to somebody that I know or that I, that I live with or that I love, that that would be my ego, that, that it caused that. And so, hold on one second. Ah, okay. There we go. I, uh, all right. I get why a lot of you think that I look like, uh, Reverend Henry Adams now. So, but, uh, and I got an extra chin. Like I had, I had one before, but now like I got the, this is, I have, I have a backup. So, uh, great. Well, I recognize this is the most superficial possible thing that I, I could be that I could be doing. And this is, this is just the, the, the beginning of, uh, of, you know, what, what kinds of things I could be doing to, you know, to, to help. Um, the, the first thing that comes off the top of my head is that there are lots of people who are eligible to, to get the vaccine in Washington state. Uh, I think everyone over 65 years is, is, uh, eligible. Um, but if you are younger than that and you are uh, skilled with a computer, you can help people get their uh, appointments and get them to their shots. Um, the, the, the more that, that we can do, if we can volunteer for the, you know, to, to, uh, to, to in, the, in, in the vaccine clinics, um, anything that, that, that we can do to, to help make this, this better. Um, but above all, please stay, stay safe. Um, take care of, uh, of yourselves and your family. Um, pay attention to the news. Um, we will get through this together. And um, I have one other little, uh, like little tidbit from, from that 1918 crisis um, that goes to, that, that talks about how uh, being away from from the temple um, is ha, has has a meaning. Um, so the mayor of of Seattle at the time was named Ole Hansen, and um, when the when he tried locking down the city uh, after the first uh, outbreak in 1918, somebody uh, from a church complained that they were closing the churches down, and the mayor at the time said, and I quote. Uh, religion which won't keep for two weeks is not worth having. Um, I know that it's going to be a lot more than than two weeks before we all get to be back together, but the uh, the tradition, uh, our practice, is is going to go on, and the things that we do today are are us showing that we're learning um, and that we're practicing it. So, so with that, um, I wish you health and safety. And um, I hope to see you safely very soon. Please join me in Gasho. Namo Amida Buts. Namo Amida Buts. Namandab. 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 Hello, 
my name is Tyler Moriguchi, Chair of the Membership Committee for the Seattle Betsuyan Buddhist Temple. Like many of you, I am grateful for the work of Rinman Kusunoki and the staff and volunteers of the Seattle Betsuyan for streaming the Sunday service each week. Many hours of taping, editing, and planning go on behind the scenes to produce each video. In addition to our Sunday services, Rinman Kusunoki also works to stream three to four additional services each week. And one of Sensei's New Year's resolutions is to increase the number of lectures and seminars in the coming year. These efforts and other programming at the temple are funded in large part by our temple members. Sustaining membership, formerly called Ijikai dues, support the daily operations and maintenance of the temple, including online services and programs. Yearly sustaining membership dues are $400 per adult and $350 per people ages 70 and over. There are no dues for dependent children of sustaining members. If you're able to do so, please consider becoming a sustaining member today to help us continue our work spreading the Dharma. Membership dues can be paid online on the Seattle Betsuin website or sent to the temple office. If you are unable to become a sustaining member at this time, donations of any amount are greatly appreciated. Thank you for supporting the Seattle Betsuin Buddhist Temple. Hi, my favorite campfire candy is peanuts. My favorite part is the butter, the toffee, and the peanuts. Please support campfire. Thank you. This is caramel cluster. It has almonds, caramel, and chocolate. Nine pieces per container and five dollars each. This is Roca. It has butter crunch toffee and almonds, and it's individually wrapped five dollars each. This is Mint Patties. It is $5 a box, and this is my favorite because it is very minty. Hi, this is Mint Patties covered in with rich chocolate. It's my favorite. $5 a box. Please support Campfire Group 699. Thank you. The Seattle Betsween is grateful for your participation in today's service. Please stay tuned for the Japanese language service featuring Rinban Kusunoki. Thank you to Rinban Katsuya Kusunoki, Connor McKinney, Minister's Assistant Alex Sakamoto, Reverend Matt May, Minister's Assistant Mia Stout, Reverend Melissa Opal of the Spokane Buddhist Temple, Ayano Kusunoki, Dean O. Shields, Kemi Nakabayashi, Alice Fukushima of the Palo Alto Buddhist Temple, Junko Nakano, Annette Inoue of the Vista Buddhist Temple, Dennis Yamashita, Reverend Kenjitsu Nakagaki, Young Adult Minister's Assistant Michiko Wong, and Tyler Moriguchi for producing and presenting today's service. The Seattle Betsuin is hosting a special lecture by Rev. Dr. Matsumi Wundra of the Orange County Buddhist Church on Wednesday, February 3rd from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Visit the temple's website for registration and additional information on the Shin Buddhist Study Series offering. Support the temple's campfire youth by purchasing candy for their annual fundraiser. Proceeds are used for troop supplies and events. Please subscribe to the Betsuin's YouTube channel and help Rinban Kusunoki reach at least 1,000 subscribers. Your subscription allows you to view current and past presentations. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and visit the Betsuin's website for additional information on memberships, services, workshops, and events within the temple and Jodo Shinchu community. The temple appreciates your dana, support, and donations to the Seattle Betsuin. Your gifts allow the temple to continue streaming online services, programs, and Dharma teachings to you at home. May you be touched by Amida Buddha's compassion. Thank you. みなさん、おはようございます。1月31日の日本語講座、シアトル別院日本語講座 
ようこそお参りくださいましたありがとうございます、えー、今日もですねまず音読さんを皆さんとお昭和してから始めさせていただきたいと思いますにょー<咳>はいでは次にですね「三桂門」「来三門を」を、えー、読ませていただきたいと思います6ページですね6ページ7ページですね「来三門」人参受けがたし今すでに浮く仏法聞きがたし今すでに聞く好み根性に向かってどせずんばさらにいずれの章に向かってか好みをどせん大衆もろともに死神に三方に帰えし立てまつるべし自ら仏に帰えし立てまつるまさに願わくば主情とともに大道を大下して無常意を起こさん自ら法に帰えし立てまつるまさに願わくば主情とともに深く胸像に入りて知恵海のごとくならん自ら僧に帰えし立てまつるまさに願わくば主情とともに大衆を通りして一切無下ならん無常人人未明の方は百千万語にも愛をこと語し我いま検問し受持することを得たり願わくは如来の真実義を受けし立てまつらんナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナマンダブナマンダブナマンはいいありがとうございます、えーまあ、ご法はですね今日始めさせていただくにあたりましてまず御三代を挙げさせていただきたいと思います、えー、今一度ですね合唱礼拝お願いいたします善悪の二つ総じてもって存じせざるなりそのゆえは如来の御心によしとおぼしめすほどに自利等したらばこそよきを知りたるにてもあらめ如来の足とおぼしめすほどに知利等したらばこそ足さを知りたるにてもあらめども煩悩愚足の凡夫固く無常の世界はよろずのこと皆もって空ごとたわごとまことあることなきにただ念仏のみぞまことにておわしますナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナマンダナマンダナマンダはい改めましておはようございます1月31日、1月ももう最後で、明日から2月になりますけれども、皆様、いかがお過ごしでしょうか。えまあ、ちょこちょこですね、あのもう
コロナウイルスのワクチンを打ち始めたっていう方も出てきているようですけれどもあのまだまだですねこのような状況が続いておりもうしばらくまだですねこういうあのオンラインでの法要お勤めを続けていくことになりそうですね。あのまあ、このオンラインで限られた生活もうほぼ、ね、1年ぐらい続いておりますけれども、まあ、こんな中でですね私も一つ今年この冬から一つ新しくチャレンジしていることがあります、まあ、それは何かというとですね、まあ、スキースキーをすることなんですねまあ私これまで前も話しましたけれども比較的暖かいところにずっと生活していたということもありましてほとんどスキーの経験っていうのがスキーをした経験っていうのがないんですね。小学校の頃に一度それから、えー、20代の時に一度それから開教師としてアメリカに来てすぐの時に1回だけですねレイクタホーに行ってスキーをした記憶があってですねまあその3回ぐらいですねですのでまああの本当にまあスキーは下手くそなんですけれども、まあ、今回改めてですね久しぶりにまたスキーを10年10年以上経ってますね前回してからそれぶりにスキーをして思ったことはですねまあ怖いなというふうに思う,思うんですよ。まあ、スキーでこう滑っていくことのこの怖さですねたるやもう本当にこうどうしていいかわからなくなるでこの怖さっていうのがどこから来るのかなっていうふうに思うとですねこのスピードが速いっていうのでまあ怖いまあスピードが速いといっても私が出してるスピードなんて本当にもうちょろちょろちょろちょろしたもんなんでしょうけれども。他から見ればですねでも私の中ではまあすごいスピードでいってるような感覚になってるんですでそのスピードが怖いということもあるのかもしれませんけれども怖さの一番の原因はですね止まり方がわからないということですこうちょっとずつちょっとずつスピードが出ていった時にあれこれ大丈夫かなどうやって止まるんだろうかこのままずっといってどっか崖に落ちるんじゃないだろうかとかねあのこのままずっとスピードが上がっていってそこでもうこうって転んでまた怪我をするんじゃないだろうかとかその速くなっていくスピードをコントロールできない止めることができないいうことの怖さからが怖さの原因であるなっていうふうに本当にあのつくづく思います。でちょっとずつ練習していくとその止まり方っていうのが少しずつスピードをゆっくりしていく止まり方っていうのがですねちょっとずつ分かるようになってきてその怖さっていうのが少しずつ取り除かれていっているところですねまだまだ完全にはそうはなっていないですけれども、まあ、改めてですね、まあ、止まることができるから進むことができるんだな止ま,る止まり方が分かって初めて滑ることができるんだなというのを教えられましたあ,のある人はですね宗教はブレーキだいいうこことととををおっっしゃたたのを聞いたことがありますよくよく考えるとですね私たちの生活例えば経済であったり教育であったりまあ今の世の中何事もこう前にどんどんどんどんどんどんどんどん進んでいくことが求められて一日一日どんどんどんどん進んでいきます、えー、さっきのスキーに例えるならですねこのまま行ってしまうと止まり方も分からずにどんどんどんどん進んでいっていずれ大怪我をするんじゃないかどこかに落ちるんじゃないかそういう思いを持ちながらですね生きているところもあるのかなというふうに思いますそこで必要になってくるのがやはり私たちの人生におけるあのブレーキですねそれが宗教ですよ私たちの,あの人生をねふと立ち止まって振り返って考えさせてくれるのが宗教まあ特に仏教浄土真宗にはそういう要素があるんではないかなというふうに思います止まることができるから初めて進むことができるということを考えるとですねそういう宗教仏教浄土真宗の教えを聞かせていただいて
ふと立ち止まって自分を振り返ることができるからこそまた改めて次の一歩が進めることができるのかなそういうふうにも思います。今日は五三代でですね、まあ、これもあのよく使われる有名な五問ですね、単理章の中から紹介させていただきました。まあ、せっかくですのでね、この現代語訳、あの駆け足先生が出されている現代語訳も紹介させていただきたいと思います。その方がね、ちょっと分かりやすいかなというふうに思います。本当に私どもは如来のご恩がどれほど尊いかを問うこともなくいつもお互いに良いとか悪いとかそればかりを言い合っております親鸞上人はここからですね紹介させてもらったのは何が善であり何が悪であるのかそのどちらも私は全く知らないなぜなら如来がそのお心で善と大思いになるほどに善を知り尽くしたのであれば善というのは良いということですね。善を知ったと言えるであろうし、また如来が悪と大思いになるほどに悪を知り尽くしたのであれば、悪を知ったと言え,るの言えるからである。しかしながら、私どもはあらゆる煩悩を備えた凡夫であり、この世は燃え盛る家のようにたちまちに移り変わる世界であって、すべては虚しく偽りで真実と言えるものは何一つないその中にあってただ念仏だけが真実なのであると仰せになりましたというのが「歎異抄」の御問ですね私たちっていうのはいい悪いっていうのを常に考えながら生活をしています、まあ、この御問に聞かせていただくならばその私たちのいい悪いの判断っていうのはですねまあ何を基準としてるのかで念仏のみぞまことというふうに親鸞上人は最後おっしゃってくださってますけれどもそれはどういうことなんだろうかまあ,あのそれを考えさせられる出来事がありましたのでここでちょっと紹介させていただきたいと思いますえ去年の1月に新しいグループとして,してですねヤングブディストエディトリアルっていう若い子どもたち若い、まあ、青年っていうかねが集まったグループが立ち上がったんですね、まあ、シアトル別院でここで去年の1月に発足したんですけれどももう,もうシアトル別院を離れてというかねもう本当にこう BCA 全体にあの広がっていってるグループですでそこの、まあ、メンバーのヤングブディストエディトリアのメンバーの人からですねあの「先生ちょっとインタビューさせてください」ということで連絡が来ましたでそのクエスチョンどういうことに対するインタビューかっていうことはですねこの1年で経験したことで「One year of 何々」ということでインタビューをしたいと言うんですねでクエスチョンはですね「What have you achieved this year?」何をこの1年で成し遂げたか2020年ですね And how can you view it from a Buddhist perspective? それを仏教,との仏教の視線からどう見ていくのか。まあ、ワンイヤーオフということで言うと、例えばですね、あの例を送ってくれたんですけれども、ワンイヤーオブズームとか、ワンイヤーオブバーチャルリレーションシップとか、オンライン上の関係とかですね、ワンイヤーオブインターディペンデンスとか、ラブとか、ロンリネスとか、まあ、他にもいろいろ送ってくれて、まあ、グラティキュードとかラーニングとかマインドフルネスとかワンイヤーオーブンの後につく言葉を送ってくれてですね、まあ、最後にもう一つワンイヤーオブバーチャルサービスこういうオンラインの,あのサービスっていうのもありますよっていうふうに送ってくれたんですねまあ皆さんならこのそういうインタビューがもし来たらですねどのようなトピックを選ばれるでしょうかねこの1年を振り返ってどうかって言われるとで私が選んだのはですね「One Year of My Ministry」ということで、まあ、この1年の私の僧侶としての活動っていうことをトピックとして挙げさせていただきましたでこの本当にこの1年っていうのは初めてのことが本当に次から次に起こってですねまあ、僧侶としてお寺としてどう対応どのように対応していったらいいのか
どのように人員活動をしていったらいいのかっていうのを本当に考えさせられる1年でした、まあ、例えばですねもうほ,ほぼ1年前になりますけれどもあのコロナウイルスのあのが広まってですねお寺が閉まりましたこれ誰も経験したことがないですねおそらくこんなに長い時間お寺シアトル別院の門が閉められたままっていうのはおそらく第二次世界大戦中に閉まって以来ではないかなというふうに思いますまあ住職として林番としてどうしたらいいのかサンデーサービスどうしたらいいんだろうか法事はどうしたらいいんだろうかお葬式はどうしたらいいんだろうか、まあ、いろんな勉強会なんかどうしたらいいんだろうかで何をしたらいいんだろうかというのを本当に考えさせられる1年でしたまた6月5月6月頃にはですね、まあ、ブラック・ライブズ・マターっていうあの黒人の差別に対する運動が起きました、まあ、いろんなところでデモが起きて騒動が起きて集会,集会開かれてですねあのこういう人種差別、まあ、差別のことについて考えていこうという機運が高まりましたお寺として僧侶として何をしたらいいのかそういうことに参加していくのかしていかないのか参加するのはどう参加していくのかというのも本当に考えさせられました8月末から9月にかけては大規模な山火事が起こりましたまあ、毎年のように最近は起こってますけれども今年は昨年ですね昨年は特にひどかったですね家を失った人がいたり家族や友人を失った人がいたりそういうこともありました雨が少ない地球の温暖化の影響ということもあったのかもしれませんそれに対してどうしていったらいいのか何をすることがいいのかそれも考えさせられました11月には大統領選挙があってまあ、これは国を二分するようなな選挙になりましたお寺は宗教団体ですので政治には絡まないなので何もしないのかそれとも何か発信していくのか発信するのは何を発信するのか、まあ、そういうですね、まあ、人種の問題経済の問題環境の問題医療の問題政治の問題それが次から次に今まで経験したことのないような問題が次から次に起こってですねその対応を迫られるということもありましたそういうことをずっと考えて考えてどうしたらいいのかなというふうに考えてまあ1年経ってですね今私が思うことはですねお寺はお寺がすべきことを僧侶は僧侶がすべきことをするまずそれを忘れてはいけない。いうことでいうことですどのような状況であれ実はやらなければいけないことっていうのは変わらないんですねまあ、方法とか手段は変わるかもしれませんけれども本当にやらなきゃいけないことっていうのは同じなんですねそれは何かっていうともちろんお念仏を聞いてお念仏を広げていくこと仏法を聞かせていただいて仏法を広げていくことですもうそれだけなんですね私は人種問題の専門家でもありませんし経済の専門家でもありません環境問題の専門家でもなければ医療の専門家でも政治の専門家でもありません浄土真宗の僧侶です浄土真宗の僧侶ができることというのはお念仏の教えを広げていくことそれが一番大事なことなんだなというのを改めて教えられる一年でしたさまざまにいろいろなことが起,きて起こっている諸問題に対してですねどうしたらいいかっていうのを考えていくということは大切なことですね大切なことですただ外から入ってくる情報に右往左往して僧侶としてお寺としてやらなければいけないことを見失っては元もこのもないということです僧侶としてはですね外から来る何かしらの影響で何をするかを決めるんではなくてですねお念仏を聞いてお念仏の教えを伝えていく中でできることを考えていくというのが大切なことなんだなというふうに思います仏法がまず先に来ないといけない仏法が中心にないといけないということです、まあ、例えば一つの例としてですね
、まあ、人種の問題が起こったとします人種の問題が起こったでそれに対してそれにふさわしい教えをが何かっていうのはを探すのはですねどこか人種問題を中心にして仏法を聞いているところがあるように思いますそうではなくて仏法を聞いていく中から外で起こっていることに対して今取るべき行動は何なのかっていうのを考えていくその内側から内側から自分の言動が出てくるのが大切なんではないかなというふうに思いますまあ、もう少しちょっと具体的に言うとですね人生を自分の人生を豊かにするために世の中を良くするために仏教をまあ学ぶのか聞くのかまあもう少し言えば人生を豊かにする手段として道具として仏法を使うのか自分の人生を豊かにするために仏教を聞いたり学んだりしていくのか利用していくのかそれがまあ一つの考え方でもう一つはですね自分が歩む道として仏道があって悟りへの道があってその仏道を歩んでいくことで自分の人生が豊かになっていき世の中が平穏になっていくこれあの似てるようですけれども私の中では本当に大きく違うなというふうに思うんですね。自分の人生を豊かにすることが先に来るのかそれとも、えー、悟りへの道仏道っていうのが仏教の教えっていうのが先に来るのかやはりまあ私も含めてそうなのかなっていうところがあるんですけれどもどちらかというと最初に言った自分の人生を豊かにする世の中を良くするための手段道具として仏教を見ていくという人が多いそういう場合が多くなってきているように思いますやはりまあ私も含めですね誰でもやっぱり自分が好きです自分の人生豊かにしたいその思いがどうしても先に出過ぎてですね仏教っていうのをどこか手段道具として利用ししよううとしていいるるる自分がいるように思いますでもそうではなくてですねやっぱりこれが自分の歩むべき道なんだという自分自身をそこの道の中にボンとあ入れてしまってですねそこを歩む中から自分の進むべき道自分のするべき行動というのが出てくる。それが真の仏教との生きる生きていく生き方なのかなというふうに思いますお寺として僧侶としてやはりそっちの仏道をみんなで歩んでいくということをですねしっかり伝えていく必要があるなというふうに本当に考えさせられる一年でしたもちろんですね自分の人生を豊かにしたいそういう思いから仏,教仏教を聞いていくことを入り口として仏道に入っていかれるという方もたくさんおられると思います私もどこかそういうところがあったような気がしますそうであれですねやはり私僧侶としてはお寺としては仏教を中心にしたこの仏道というのをみんなで歩んでいくその道っていうのを提供していく皆さんにちょっとずつ広めていくっていうのが僧侶としてのお寺としての本当の役割なのではないかなというふうに改めて教えてもらいましたこの1年を通してですね本当に大切に思ったことは自分のまあ都合による善とか悪とかとか社会の中で言われている善とか悪とかそういうことは本当に自分の周りに常に付きまとってきますだからこそもう一つの目心の中に、えーもう一つの目というか心をしっかり持つことが大事ですねその、まあ、心とか目というのが仏様の知恵の目であり慈悲の心ですねそういう知恵の目慈悲の心を通して自分自身を見つめていくふと立ち止まって自分自身を見つめていくふと立ち止まって社会を見つめていく自分に振り回されず社会に振り回されず今この世界で何が起きているのかこの命っていうのをこの命はどう生きているのかっていうのを見つめていくことの大切さっていうのを教えられた一年であったように思います
今日はですねあのこのヤング・ブディスト・エディトリアルというグループから質問をいただいたことに対する、まあ、そこで考えさせていただいたことをですね皆様にちょっとシェアさせていただきましたえ今日もどうもお参りありがとうございました最後にですね五文書承認一流書を拝読させていただきまして今日のこのご縁を終わりにさせていただきたいと思います寛容は拝読の五文書に変えさせていただきます承認一流のご関係の趣は新人のもって本とせられそうろうそのゆえはもろもろの造業を投げ捨てて一心に皆に奇妙をすれば不可思議の眼力として仏の偏より往生は事情をせしめたもそのくらいを一年ぽっき入賞状始終とも釈しその上の正明念仏た如来我が往生を定めたまいし御法人の念仏と心べきなりあなかしこあなかしこなもあみだぶつなもあみだぶつなもあみだぶつなもあみだぶつなもあみだぶつなもあみだぶつなもあみだぶつなもあみだぶつなもあみだぶつなもあみだぶつなもあみだぶつなもあみだぶつなもあみだぶつ